Congress since January of 2007. Little did I know when I got elected in 2006 that we would, uh, that we'd be even here today, you know, talking about these issues. Yes, we had the flood in 1993 here in Iowa. Uh, I was in Mexico, I was at Cornell College at the time, and the whole month of July I was in Mexico, and I still remember watching that house go down the Mississippi River. I think it was maybe Alton, Illinois or Alton, was right, you know, right around there. Uh, I don't know if you remember that iconic sort of scene, you know. And then come 2008, we have the same kinds of things, hogs on top of a shed, uh, you know, at uh, Oakville, uh, which is in my district, right, where the Iowa flows into the Mississippi, exactly the same kind of scenes. Um, in August of 2008, after the flood, I was in Burlington with my wife Terry overnight. Uh, because we went to a bees game, Burlington bees game, uh, and presented uh, medals to a, a veteran. Uh, and uh, then on Sunday morning, we got up and I drove Terry up to the big ditch, uh, which is north of Burlington, up by Oakville. And there were still thousands of acres inundated in early August after the June floods. Um, this was quite an event here in Iowa, as you all know and caused tremendous damage. And at that time, my congressional district, I had 15 counties. And half of all the damage, at least, in the state of Iowa from the Great Flood of 2008 happened in my congressional district. I learned, I mean, I knew about watersheds in Iowa. I grew up in Sioux City, you know, if you look over here. I know about the Les Hills and the Missouri River watershed and all that. Um, and, and how Iowa kind of goes like this in terms of the watershed. Plus, I was a meteorology major for a couple of years at Iowa State, but don't hold me to anything on that, all right? It's, I feel inadequate talking to all you folks about that. But, but, you know, I knew about the watershed, watersheds in Iowa, you know, about sort of the topography, the geography, all of that, but not nearly as much as I knew by the time I was finished getting around to all these different parts of my district in 2008 to talk about floods, to talk about how we can help these folks. Um, and over time, we have, we have really learned so much, mainly because of the, of the help of the flood center here. But, you know, we're able to get significant assistance through Congress. Um, it was contentious. We had, we had, I brought, I brought uh, Tom Harkin and I in particular brought President Bush to Iowa. Uh, not not long after the flood hit, came in on Air Force One, and uh, I still have a picture of, of me talking, educating the former educator that I that I am at Cornell College, right, uh, educating the President of the United States about my district and all that on Air Force One, kind of instructing him. And then I remember taking him over to the to the window as we were flying around Cedar Rapids and Iowa City before we landed, sort of pointing out you know, what was going on. And I'm really glad he came in. We were not able to get a tremendous amount of help initially, we got some, but then we had to wait until uh, early September to get a lot more. And Chuck Grassley and I partnered. Um, I know that some of the money from the Midwest, Midwestern Disaster Tax Relief Act has gone to projects not everybody's been in favor of, but at the same time, it was about $4.6 billion that, that uh, Senator Grassley and I uh, were able to uh, get through Congress greatly needed tax relief to residents and to businesses related to that flood in 2008. Um, and then we, we needed more funding and we're able to get more funding through the Congress. Over the years, we're able to take advantage of, of um, the, the federal agencies, especially HUD, uh, to make sure that we got community development block grants to get the kind of assistance that we needed to get people back on their feet, whether it was on Ellis Boulevard in Cedar Rapids or the town of Oakville that I mentioned already, whatever the case may be. And, and to this day, whenever I see Sean Donovan, who went from, from being HUD secretary and did such great work for us uh, beginning in 09, uh, whether and that, then he went to the Office of Management Budget where he is now and still making important decisions for Iowa and for the country. Whenever I see him, uh, formally or informally, I thank him for all of his great help. He was a wonderful, wonderful help to all of us. And our delegation came together, our federal delegation, on a bipartisan basis to do what we could for Iowa, and we continue to do that. And I had some conversations 
with Larry and VTech about where we go from here as well. Um, but, you know, we don't now have, uh, still to this day in America, a comprehensive flood center, a national flood center, a place where I think we could do so much of the work that's necessary. We have a great flood center here, and again, I thank Joe for helping to, to, to get the funding for this. We have a great flood center here. We can, I think, teach so much of the rest of the country what we found here at this flood center. I'm gonna let these folks talk about some of the things they've done. My bill would establish a national flood center. It wouldn't specifically establish it here at the University of Iowa, although obviously I'd be more than happy if this is where it ended up being. I'd be totally delighted because there's been more work done here than just about anywhere else in the country on these issues. We've had to do the work because of what happened in 2008 and subsequent years since then, folks. That project out there on Dubuque Street right now, you know, raising Dubuque Street and then eventually the bridge too, that is because of what happened in 2008 and what's happened since then any number of times as well. And we continue to see challenges here in Iowa City and throughout Iowa. We had the Missouri River flood not that many years ago. I called Steve King when that happened. I'm from Sioux City originally. I called Steve King, I talked to him for 25 minutes. I said, Steve, my office has institutional experience. We will do everything we can to help you in your congressional district. Um, Steve and I don't see eye to eye on very much, as you all know, politically, right? And on policy. But this is something that, that could bring us together and, we could, and I could help him and we did during that time a few years ago that when, when the flooding hit the Missouri River. So this really, I think we've got to look at, at floods in a comprehensive way. I think we have to test new methods and build on promising methods and techniques that these folks can, can talk to us about so we can better predict and prevent flooding in the future in the first place. And having this National Flood Center, should we get this legislation through and get it established, I think will allow us really to save lives, to protect our families and our businesses and our homes and our communities. And it, and it would save us billions of dollars eventually down the road. And that's something that politicians don't do enough of, and that is think about the long term. You can, you can, you can I think, confirm that. Investments up front, and this isn't very much. We're only talking about $10 million here, folks, to begin with. But investment up front could save billions of dollars down the road. That makes total sense to me, and I think it does to taxpayers, and I think when we get the word out about this, I think that, that we can get folks on board on this. So I'm gonna turn it over now to uh, Larry and VTech. They can talk a little bit about their activities here, and then we'll open it up to questions. Uh, Dave will let us know how much time we have. He's in charge of, of uh, monitoring the clock, and just thanks, you know, I, I just gotta say one thing about these guys. I mean, they're all over Iowa, you know? I've got a district that goes all the way over to Newton, goes down to Lamoni, goes over to Keokuk, up to Clinton. I see this guy, especially on the road from time to time. I saw him at, at Iowa's Best Burgers in Kellogg, Iowa one time, if you know where I'm talking about. I think it's exit 172, uh, on uh, 173, something like that, on Interstate 80. He was out there doing monitoring, putting in gauges, whatever it is he's doing, you know, and VTech, of course, does the same kind of work. So I'm gonna turn it over to Larry right now, okay? Thanks, Larry. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's my, my great, great pleasure as a director of IIHR to make a few remarks after Congressman Loebsack uh, today. Um, my name is Larry Weber. I'm the director of IIHR Hydroscience and Engineering, and it's the hydraulics and hydrology and fluids uh, research program here at the University of Iowa that will celebrate 100 years of academic research in 2020. And so we've been in existence for over 95 years doing this type of work, and it was the state legislature following the 2008 uh, devastating floods of Eastern in Iowa that saw that we had a resource in the state, uh, came and met with us to learn more about IIHR, Hydroscience and Engineering, and that led to a request by the General Assembly to the University of Iowa to establish the state's uh, first and only state-funded flood center. Vitek Krajewski, my colleague, uh, and good friend uh, here is the director of the Iowa Flood Center that's been in existence since uh, the 2009 legislative session. So we have this experience uh, in running a statewide flood center and in Iowa with flooding being so uh, predominant here in terms of natural disasters, it's a very important task for us. 
Uh, we began that work first by deploying sensors and developing community-based mapping systems to inform uh, residents of their risk for flooding. And so today we've established about 230 stream level sensors across Iowa to help inform small communities that previously were on unengaged streams. Uh, we've released a series of community-based inundation maps uh, based on Google Maps platform for anyone to go to uh, in the largest communities of Iowa and see the risk that they face uh, in impending flood disasters. We have a mathematical model that predicts rainfall, uh, its conversion to runoff and stream flow uh, that we operate at several hundred thousand locations to enhance the flood forecasting in Iowa. And we do this while working very uh, closely with state agencies and federal partners that have a responsibility for flooding across the nation and in Iowa. Uh, we work with them very closely here in the state of Iowa. So we're very excited about that. I've always been so pleased and impressed with Congressman Lobsack and his work in response to flooding in Southeast Iowa. We've had uh, communities that have called the Congressman's office. He's directed them uh, to the flood center, uh, Oakville, uh, Cologne has been a, a really shining example, a community that was facing about a $1 million a year annual expenditure of flood insurance premiums in their community. Uh, we came, helped remap that community, and reduced uh, that cost of flood insurance to the community to less than $300,000 a year, a significant savings to a small community in Iowa, so very pleased with that. Uh, today, as we look forward uh, to the work that we're doing, we continue to advance the technology and the flood forecasting system we have for the state, uh, but we're also uh, working towards creating better community resilience. And how do we better prepare our communities for the disasters that uh, we haven't yet seen? And that led, uh, uh, that interest led uh, us to write a proposal in a competition to housing and urban development. And uh, this spring we were delighted uh, in January to hear from uh, HUD Secretary that Iowa was one of th 13 jurisdictions in the country that received funding in the National Disaster Resilience Competition. And the state of Iowa received $96,887,177 in that competition. How many cents? Uh, zero. Okay. Uh, zero. So <laughs> flat, uh, let's say. Uh, so we received that funding uh, to the state of Iowa, and it is about taking a long-term view uh, towards flood resiliency uh, in our state, and is becoming an example across the country for how rural residents work with urban communities uh, to reduce flooding, to hold that water back on private lands for public benefit, and really bring that partnership together. So uh, through the Congressman's efforts uh, and his introduction of additional legislation that could create a national flood center, we stand waiting. Uh, we stand ready to help. Uh, we stand ready to serve, and we're excited about this opportunity. And so uh, with that, I think we'd be happy to answer any questions and, and certainly- Do you want to make any comments, Dick, at all? Uh, a couple. Yeah, all right, all right, one last one. Thank you, Larry. So I too would like to praise Congressman Lobsack for introducing uh, this piece of legislation. I see uh, some analogy, you know, here. I always give credit uh, of wisdom to the Iowa legislators for establishing the Iowa Flood Center. And I think that we more than uh, delivered uh, on the trust that they vested in, uh, in us. And so here I give credit uh, to Congressman Lobsack for the wisdom of establishing the National uh, uh, Flood Center, National Flood Research you know, Center, um, uh, located in academia. Uh, so clearly we have many federal agencies that have responsibilities for some aspects uh, of flooding uh, and uh, they even do some you know, research, uh, but uh, academia is very nimble and can quickly organize uh, into um, uh, um, consolidating you know, research uh, that our nation needs. So, um, uh, I have, you know, high hope uh, that something good will happen uh, from this initiative, uh, uh, and I'm uh, looking forward to it. Thanks, Thank you.